Have you ever been on a boat that was sinking and had to get into a life raft? We tried it this week and it turned out to be a lot more difficult than we expected and it was one hell of an eye-opener. Hello and welcome to this week's episode which is going to be a little bit different from our usual. As you know we are literally about to leave the marina and go back out to sea which we are so looking forward to. But In preparation for our big passage across the Pacific to Alaska we have to think a lot about safety and one of the things that we've decided to do is buy a brand new life raft. It's a Viking but a little bit more on that later. In the meantime what we're going to do is we are going to test in the pool our old life raft, it's the Plastimo, it came with the boat and the last time it was serviced was 20... 2009. So, we're not sure if it's going to open but hopefully it will open and you're going to see what it's like when the life raft opens and also how easy it is to get into it. We're going to get all suited up in our oilies. We've even got... This is Millie's normal carry bag. We're not going to make Millie do it, don't worry about it. But we've got Clive, who's been with us since we bought the boat, and he's wearing Millie's life vest, so he'll be in here. One of us is going to try and get him into the life raft without drowning him. And also, I just want to take this time to say, if anyone knows of any flotation devices that would work for a cat in a situation like this, please put them in the comments below. I've been looking and looking at the moment, not sure what to do about her. Anyway, let's get on with it. So we're going to play you through the footage right now and as we go we're going to talk you through our feelings, our experiences and what we discovered along the way. So this is us setting up by the pool, nice sunny day. <laughs> as you can see we have put all of our oilies on. I even got as far as putting my boots on. It was super hot, wasn't it? Was it was ridiculously hot. In fact I got in the pool just to cool down <laughs> before I jumped in. Uh, yeah, I didn't put any shoes on. Uh, we did forget to put our life jackets on. Yes, sorry about that. We should have put the life jackets yeah. on as well. But we didn't really actually want them to go off, did we? So <laughs> yeah. it would have been a step too far. Yeah. Okay, so here you can see we've thrown it in the pool. Now this, we were warned about this. Life rafts come with a very long line. Obviously the idea is that you tie it onto the back of the boat and throw it out the back. So here you can see me struggling a bit with, with that process. Um, but essentially you would tie it off on a cleat, wouldn't you? Yeah, normally it would float out the back of the boat. Obviously with the weather it would pull it away from the boat really quickly. That's yeah. the idea, isn't it? So yeah. this took a little longer than you would expect. Come on Furlong, put your back into it. <laughs> Come on, let's do something. Yay! Here we go. So the first great thing was that it inflated. Now remember this was last serviced in 2009. Yep. So uh, it's inflated okay. Now as you'll see here, the middle bar pops up and that's an inflatable bar and that creates uh, the roof. And I'm just taking Millie out of the bag there. Because <laughs> we've been trying to work out a way in which we would be able to look after Millie. And she obviously should wear her life vest, but we need some kind of floating device for her as well. But at least we thought we would, uh, we would try it. Well, as you saw, uh, that was quite hard to pull and we were warned it might be like that, but it's inflated, so let's get in. So you jump in, see if you can keep it above you. Well, so first of all, I wanted to get Millie in there. Uh, this is Clive acting as Millie, and then we wanted to get our grab bag that we took off the boat in there. Let me get Billy in first, it's more important. Okay. I'll get the camera on. I know, you must be floating, Jamie. I'm oh, yeah, floating, yeah. Good point. Now, I believe there is a foothold here which we have to put our foot in to push ourselves up, and the first person in has to push themselves all the way to the far end. Uh, 
Okay, now here you can see, you see that floating sack there? That's really important. And we'll talk a bit more about that at the end because this created a bit of a problem for us. Now, how do we do this? So you can see here, I'm really struggling to get my foot in that ladder and then this happens. <laughs> so we're upside down now. So as it tips up, everything that was inside flies out, including Millie in her bag. Now she's floating because she's got her floating device on, but I needed to get over and try and get hold of her pretty quickly and hold on to her while we then worked out how to get the thing back up the right way. The first problem is I'm trying not to stand up in the swimming pool. We're trying to replicate yeah. a real life scenario. And of course you wouldn't be able to stand up. This actually makes it more difficult because I'm purposely kicking my legs out to, to stop myself from standing up. And I spent quite a bit of time with this thing upside down because I'm now trying to work out, right, what, what, what do I do next? Is it possible to uh, flip it up from the inside or do we start again? Okay, we're upside down. I cannot work out what to do next. So we gave up trying to swim, it was just too difficult and we stood on the floor in order to tip it over. Uh, just bear in mind of course in the sea we would have our life jackets on and we would also be floating because the sea is obviously a lot more easy to float in. Millie in the grab bag float away and then we go back and get them. So, trying again. There's a drowned cat. Uh, that's the, that's it there. Oh, I'm inside. Okay, let me hold it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go around the other side, Liz. Back. Okay. So with Jamie providing some ballast on the other side, I tried to get in. Now it was okay, I could get my foot onto the rung of the ladder, but then I couldn't get the other foot on and it was flailing around, you can see in the water there. So the only way I could do it was to pull myself up using my upper body strength. And to be honest with you, I was really knackered at this stage and didn't think I'd make it. I think this is in. Oh, she's in, right. We've lost our grab bag. Okay, so now it's my turn. Uh, we've got Liz in the back of the life raft, which should make it easier. It won't tip up this time. Uh, but we've still got the grab bag to pick up. Now, the question is, if this happened out at sea in rough weather, would I swim off and try and find the grab bag in bad weather? I don't know, what do you think? I don't think you would, because I think the grab bag would have gone a long time ago. Mm. And I don't suppose we'd even be there, to be honest with you. I think at this stage of the game in real life, it would have all been over, personally. Mm. But of course, remember, we are still tied onto the boat, so I suppose as long as we're holding on to the dinghy, we'd be okay. But the likelihood is we're going to be in big, big, big waves that are going to be pushing us around. Well, also, the, the, the boat may have sunk by now, yeah. so maybe we, should, we wouldn't be on the back end of the boat. You just don't know, do yeah. you? Okay, so this I struggled with this. Um, I have a bad shoulder. I won't go into details on that. But of course, fully clothed, and I've got my boots, and they're full of water. Fortunately, because Liz had already got in there, she was able to instruct me, and so I just followed her instructions and pulled on the, the white, um, the, the yellow bits of rope inside the life raft. Yeah, there was some strong webbing that you were able to use. 
Well, we're in. Very, very difficult to get in. You need a deeper ladder. When I talk about the Viking, you'll find out why we needed to get the Viking the better, the, the, the much better dinghy, because it's almost impossible to turn it over. And that getting in, in a pool, very flat, very difficult. I mean, perhaps you would get some help with some waves throwing you in. But that's the thing, they never tell you how difficult it is to get in these things. So uh, we've got another two people on standby who are going to join us. So we want to get four people in it. So when you guys are ready. So this is Kevin and Mimi of Sailing Yacht Aquabago. And we invited them to come along because we wanted to see how many people we could comfortably fit inside the life raft. So as you can see, of course, they have no oilies, but even so, you can see here that Mimi is really struggling to get in. Okay, you gotta. I did, I did, I did hand over hand. That's it. Not the most elegant of things. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, come back. Yeah, not too far over the corner. You need to balance yeah. against him coming in. Okay. Yes. Nice work. Oh, nice work. All right. Okay. Well home for the next yeah. Four weeks. Okay. <laughs> so, what do we all think of that thing? Yeah. All right. That was quite an experience. Yeah. <laughs> we need to have some splashing waves. And, yeah, and, uh, I know. Should be yeah. out there showing us down with the hoses. Now, uh, Kevin, do you want to close the door? See if we can work out how to close it. I mean, it looks like they're on tabs, which you just pull. See? Is it some sort of strap here? There's a I'm sure maybe just pull it tight. Okay. You have to undo all the there's loops all the way round, you pull it round and tighten it and then that's uh, then that's the door done up. So this goes out and it pays out and it's still attached to the boat. And then you use this to saw this off, which is attached in here. Okay, initial uh, reactions from having just come out the pool, that was very difficult. It was exhausting and I think the main thing was not knowing what to do. That's my initial impression was once you're in the water, trying to get in and not realising the thing was going to tip over. You saw me spend quite a bit of time inside it, upside down, and that's me trying to work out, can I climb into this and write it whilst a minute? or what. So uh, that's my initial impression and that's under uh, studio conditions with absolutely flat calm seas and of course a floor to bounce up and down on to help me in because as you saw I had a problem with that as well. Um, but we'll talk a bit more about this in a bit more detail but let's just catch Liz. What do you reckon? Well I think it's a really good uh, learning experience for everybody and it kind of proves everything that I've been reading about when I was looking for our new dinghy in that it's very important that it doesn't turn upside down, but if it does, it writes itself immediately. And the modern, di uh, and the modern life rafts now, I have a lot of ballast at the bottom. They have several layers, and that's one of the really big points. And the second point is that you have a ladder that's long enough for you to get some purchase. Otherwise, I found that I had to do it with all my upper body strength just to pull myself in, and that was quite hard. And of course, these are easy conditions. Yep. And a roaring sea, very different. It's, it's scary when it puts it in perspective like that. But anyway, uh, we'll go back now and we'll have a look at the footage and we'll talk about it in a bit more detail and uh, lessons learned. Yeah. Well, I have to say that was a real education. Obviously, it would have been better to have done all this actually out in the open seas, but we wanted to do it somewhere where we could have all the cameras to show you our initial experience of climbing into that. 
And uh, my, my first takeaway from it was how exhausting it is before it even got into the life raft with all your oilies, your boots, everything full of water, worrying about grab bags. Um, I was exhausted. Yeah, there are a number of things that I was thinking about, but the, the biggest takeaway for me is that you really need to test your own life raft, if at all possible. You don't want to be getting in your life raft for the first time in a real life dangerous situation. I mean, that's what it, that's what it said to me. I had read about it. I knew about the thing with the ladder. And I knew that some of the more modern life rafts, the better life rafts, have much longer ladder, allowing you to get the purchase and to get in. Mm. I also knew that uh, nowadays you, they're, much more, they're much better at self-writing. Yeah, um, now, on the subject of self-writing, yeah. in that clip you saw me underwater, I pulled something from underneath the life raft and put it in the life raft. And this is what was supposed to have kept the life raft um, upright. We had a problem with these. If you remember, we when we first climbed into the uh, the life raft, we tipped it up, and I spent half my time underneath it. That shouldn't have happened, and it took us a while to work out why it, it had done this. At the bottom of the swimming pool were these bags. Now these bags have a lead weight in each corner, one there and one there, and we believe these are supposed to hang off the back end of the life raft underwater. They're supposed to fill up with water and act as a counterbalance. And unfortunately, all three of these ended up on the bottom of the swimming pool uh, immediately after deploying. So they obviously fell off, or they weren't packed right, or the stitching has gone. But uh, this explains why that life raft tipped over. One of the things that was in the life raft is its own grab bag. This is it. We haven't opened it yet. We thought we'd open it here on camera, show everybody what's inside it. Yeah, now normally with uh, life rafts, when you buy a new one or when you get them serviced, you can ask the people servicing it to include various things. So I think what's in here is what we asked the last guys who service our um, life raft to put in here. Yes, and it's, it's basics because we actually have three grab bags um, full of lots of other things as well. But this is what came with them. Life raft. Be bearing in mind, of course, this is nine years old. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look. Now, See the first thing I up. noticed is that there's some holes in here, and I don't know if that's happened from bringing it from the life raft to here or whether that got holes in it uh, already. First of all, one of the things we thought was missing was an oar, but is in fact inside the bag, so there is one oar included. Could have done with this in our little exercise, and of course, it's a baler. Drinking water, we've got two pouches of drinking water here. I think we've got three actually. Oh, we've got three. Is that water? Yeah. Yeah. Three pouches of drinking water of 500 ml. Uh, did you say that it was old? Yeah, it was manufactured in 2007 and it expires uh, 2012. Sponge, also I useful guess. for clearing up water. Torch. Doesn't work. A uh, little puncture repair kit. <laughs> this is the survival inspection booklet for life rafts. So I, I don't know if this is to be read once you're in the life yeah, raft. Yeah, it must be because it's in the grab bag. You, you hope so, yes. Yeah, yeah. A bit of reading there once you're inside. No, it's the. This is what we should have read before we deployed the life well, raft. Why was it inside the life raft? That's Who not knows? Very clever, is it? No. And lastly, there's a pump, obviously very useful for keeping the life raft inflated, and we saw the valves inside quite clearly marked. So this is obviously a very basic grab bag, and it is dependent on the size of the life raft and the box that it sits in when it's on deck before it's been deployed. But we do carry additional. Uh, grab bags, mm. we've got another three of those and we'll talk about those later. But we hope that this experience was good for yourselves and good for us mm. and that you learned as much as we did. But we're going to move it on now because the reason why we deployed this is that we're in a luxurious position of having a new life raft. Well it's been nearly two days now since we inflated the life raft. Just sitting here in the swimming pool, very kindly they let us do this and it looks okay, but in fact, look. 
we were at sea, we would be pumping away like mad to try and keep this thing inflated.